Hey guys, happy Thursday. One day closer to Friday. All right, time for math. Get out your math notebook. Label it with today's date, which is November 19th. And we are continuing our lesson from yesterday with our expressions and using our order of operations. We're working on mastering those skills. So label the top of your notebook. All right, let's review order of operations. What is that funny, funny phrase that we're gonna remember to help us with order of operations? Let's all do it together. Ready? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Nice job, guys. And please excuse my dear Aunt Sally because, well, dear Aunt Sally, what was she doing in the math antics or the number rock? What was she doing? Spit out her teeth. Oh, yeah, she spit out her teeth. Um, I always think that dear Aunt Sally works using her because she ate all the cookies. That's what I think of. Um, and please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What does my P stand for? Ben? Parentheses, what does the E for excuse? Maverick? Exponents. Um, my and dear, they're partners, okay? We read them left, right, like a book. What does the M stand for, Hannah? Multiplication, and the D stands for Kara? Division. And then Aunt Sally, also partners, okay? We're gonna read it left to right like a book. Um, what does the A stand for, Ma uh, Mason? Addition and then Sally is for subtraction. Very nice. How did they say it in the song? Um, for I say it left, right, like a book. He used something that was kind of uh, a little more cute. First come, first serve. Oh, yeah. First come, first serve. I like that, too. That's funny. All right. So let's dive right in. Number one. Okay. I want to point out to you. On my number one, okay, a lot of times when we're talking about um, different equations and we're solving them, we say find a solution, we say solve, um, we say explain it, okay? I want to point out to you in your math notebook, I want you to write this word for number one, simplify, okay? If they're telling you to simplify a solution or simplify an equation, it just means to solve it. Okay? You're just solving it. So I don't want that word to mix you up, and I want you to be able to recognize this word if you see it. Okay? Simplify just means to solve it. All right? So that's not going to trip any of us up seeing that word there. Okay. For simplify, isn't it like, isn't, like, isn't it like an equation or anything like that used for everything? You can simplify anything. Yep. Yep. It just means to solve it. Yep, you'll see that word especially a lot um, in fractions. We'll be using that one. But for expressions and order of operations, you could see it too. You could see it anywhere, but it just means to solve it. That's all. All right, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. What step here am I going to do first? I see an exponent, I see some multiplication, I see some subtraction, I see some addition, I see some parentheses. There is a lot going on here. This is so overwhelming. Help me break this down. Make this easier for me. Aiden? Um, you do the thing that's in parentheses. Yeah, I'm going to do this parentheses first. So what I have in parentheses here, I'm going to underline it to make sure that I don't use it again. Okay, I'm doing it now. I don't want to accidentally do 3 minus 17 later on. All right, what is 17 plus 20, everybody? 37. 37. Now... I've got all this up here left. I need to rewrite it because we are only doing how many steps per line? One. One step per line. Okay, so let's bring down the rest of my problem. All right, here's what I've got. According to our order of operations, what is going to be my next step then? Uh, Alyssa. My exponents, please excuse my exponents. 
Good. Now exponents, we haven't looked at those recently. So exponents, uh, I do four times two is eight, right? No. No? What's wrong with that? What does that mean? Oh, so that means I'm going to do four two times, right? So four times four. Very nice. What is four times four? Sixteen. And then I need to bring down the rest of my problem, right? Yeah. So I've got times three minus 37 left. I'm getting closer here. Notice again, look at our pattern that we start out nice and big and we keep bringing it down. Less and less steps, I'm narrowing it down to simplified. All right, according to, please excuse my dear aunt Sally, what is my next step here? Uh, Megan? Multiplication. Multiplication, 16 times three. Is that mental math? No. no. So you might need to come over to the side, 16 times three. What's six times three? Eighteen. What's three times one? Three. Plus one? Four. All right, 48. And then I bring down the rest of my problem here. Minus 37 equals how many? What's 48 minus 37? Good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I have it up here, you should have it in your math notebook. All right. Any questions on that one? No. All right, number two. I'm going to add a little step in here. Nothing hard, nothing you guys can't handle. Uh, another way that you might see, so find the answer, find the solution. It might, sign, might say, find the value of each expression. If you're finding the value of the expression, you're still just solving it. Find me the answer, okay? Don't let the directions trick you up. We need to find the answer, all right? But this is definitely a different way, so I want you to add this uh, to your math notebook. Find the value of each expression. It's another way that you might see those directions. Find the value of each expression. Write that in your math notebook. All right, so for this one, they're telling me that B equals three. Okay, what do you think I need to do then with that information? Bradley? You need to put it in your problem. Yeah, so where is that three gonna go? Yeah, where that B is, I know that that's actually a three. That B is called a what? What math vocab word did we use to represent that B? Max? Variable. A variable, yeah. And they're telling me that this variable has a value of three. So I can now plug that in to my expression. Now, we are only going to do one step per line. So I'm going to go ahead and add 39 times 8 minus, instead of having a B, I'm going to rewrite it with my 3 now. There we go. Now I can go ahead and do order of operations like normal, and I have a value for that variable. I want you in your math notebook, go ahead and try and solve this, please, using order of operations.
see if you guys agree or disagree and discuss. Mrs. Long's class, I want you doing this too. Don't skip this step, please. All right, tell me according to order of operations, what is my first step, Mimi? Uh, parentheses. Parentheses. What is three plus four? Seven. Seven. I bring down the rest of my problem. What is my next step then, Carly? Very nice, 39 times eight. Now that was not mental math, okay? You're gonna need to come off to the side and solve what is 39 times eight. Everybody? 312. Minus, what is 312 minus seven? 305, very nice guys. Good. If I have it up here, you should have it in your math notebook, being active learners. Number three, I want you to find the value of this expression if B equals three. Number three, in your math notebook, you try it first. When you're finished, I want you to post a picture from your math notebook. And ladies and gentlemen, this should all be in your math notebook. Nobody is using notability or pages or a random piece of paper. Your math notebook. If you're doing your work, I need to be able to see it to be able to help you. And no work means no credit because none of this is mental math. So I want you to post a picture of all of your work when you're finished, and then I want you to be the teacher. I want you to go evaluate other friends' work, see if they are incorrect, correct, give them some hints and some pointers. This is constructive criticism, okay? You're analyzing errors right now. You be the teacher. Posting it on recent activity under math. Number three, Ben.
teacher, being an active learner. One more minute. All right, B equals three. Where do I put that three? I'm replacing the B with it. So I'm gonna rewrite. I've got four plus five times six divide by three. What is my first step here that I'm going to do in my order of operations? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally Justice. Five times six. Five times six. Why not the divide? Because multiplication comes first. Uh, not because it comes first, but because multiplication and division are partners, right? So what's that saying in the song? Um, first come, first serve. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so what is five times six, everybody? 30. 30, and now I need to bring down the two items that I have left here. Four plus three, and then divided by three. What is my next step? According to my rule of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, Hannah. Very nice, 30 divided by three. And what is 30 divided by three, everybody? 10. 10. I bring down the rest of my problem. And what is four plus 10? 14. Very nice. Again, one step per line, okay? Look at how I slowly brought it down until I finally had a simplified number. I had a solution. I had an answer. All different ways of saying that. All right, let's roll on over here. You can see my Christmas tree then too. All right, number four. If B equals three, I want you to simplify this expression. Simplify this expression. In your math notebook, please, guys. You guys can have those help sheets I gave you two out. Ben, are you writing this down, sir? I see you sitting. Um, so the division was number three. I actually did number okay. four. Well, I did number three. Okay. All right, what does B equal? I'm going to rewrite my expression here. <gasps> Putting that three instead of a B. A B is called what? What do I call that? What math word? Uh, Charlie, what math word? A variable. a variable. Very nice. I've got a lot going on here, guys. Help me out here. What is going to be my first step? Sophia? parentheses and then even inside that parentheses I've got a lot going on um Brooklyn what's gonna be my first step inside these parentheses two times seven. yeah two times seven okay right
right here. What is 2 times 7? 14. 14. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring down what I have left. I did not use this minus 3 yet. One step per line. So there are going to be times, ladies and gentlemen, that you have multiple things going inside on your parentheses that you have to use your order of operation rules. There is also going to be sometimes you might see, they are called brackets that we're going to talk about, and you might have those going around your parentheses soon too. <laughs> Not like your braces uh, brackets, nope. A little different. All right, so I have more going on in my parentheses, right? What's 14 minus 3? 11. 11. And then I bring down the parts of my expression that I have left. I may have to move my tree here. All right, I have got addition and division. Which comes first? Division. Division. 22. Divide by 11. What is 22 divided by 11? 2. Plus 1 gives me a total of 3. three. Very nice. All right. Let's slide on over. Here we go. Going for a walk. Number five. Number five. Again, something we have not seen. I want you to give this a try. Think about yesterday. What did that mean if I didn't have any symbol in the middle of them? I had a letter and a number next to each other. That means I automatically do what? I see lots of hands and that makes me super excited. Go ahead and do it in your math notebook for me and then we'll discuss. I'm glad you guys remembered. Good job. All right. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? I have a variable and a number. It doesn't tell me anything in the middle here. It doesn't tell me if I need to add, subtract. What do I do there, Malia? I'm going to, good, I'm going to plug in that 2, okay, so now I have a 2 and a 5, but what am I doing with those 2 and that 5? Kara? How do you know I'm multiplying them? Oh, because they're right next to each other, my variable and my number. When they're right next to each other, I know that that automatically means I need to multiply. How is another way I can write uh, t times 5? Uh, Sophia? Yeah, five. yeah, big dot. And right in the middle. It's not going to be uh, on the line like a period. It's going to be right in the middle. What's another way I could write that? Not our preferred way, Bradley. Do the X. Yeah, do the X. And why do we want to be careful about using that X? Because you don't want to just... That X looks like a what, Bradley? It looks like an X, but what else, what, what math symbol does it look like? It looks like a what? A ladder. It's not it looks, a ladder. Mine. <laughs> a syllable X. A variable. Hey, Bradley, does that X look like an X? <laughs> I know it looks like an X. What math symbol? What, what math symbol looks like an X? Come on, Bradley. Oh my God. Yes, Bradley. We got him there. Multiplication. It was a multiplication symbol. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we want to be careful using our multiplication symbol. So we prefer to use the dot uh, or we leave it that they're right next to each other, my variable, my number. Good job, guys. All right, number six. I see a, what is this line here? We're not into this part in math yet. What's that line there called? Uh, Mimi? It's a fraction bar, yeah. And we know that we can relate fraction
action to what kind of computation? Justice. Division. Division. So when I see that fraction bar, this means 48 what? Divide, divide. Divided by Z. Very nice. This means 48 divided by Z. And they're telling me what Z equals. So I want you to find me, simplify this. So my z equals what? Two. Two. So 48 divided by 2. And that equals what? 24. <laughs> Very nice. Mental math. Yeah, that was kind of mental math. But I wanted you guys to see that fraction bar. All right. Shh. Last one, ladies and gentlemen. Settle down. Number 7. Shh. I have a table here. Okay. Again, it kind of looks scary and intimidating. Okay, Be I don't need a comment after everything. Okay. Um, it might look intimidating being in the table format, but ladies and gentlemen, it's not intimidating at all. My top row here is representing what? It's representing my B's. Okay. So it's telling me here that my B would be two, my B would be four, my B would be six. Okay, this is telling me what my B will be. What my B will be. <laughs> what my B will represent. What number, what digit. All right, this down here is telling me my expression. What is my expression? B5. Which means B what? B, B times five, that's what that means. So B is two, so right here, what is gonna be my expression? Two times five. Yeah, that means two times five, which is ten. 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 Okay, here's my expression. Here they're telling me what B is. What about here? If B is four, what's my expression? Five times four. Five times four. Four times five. Four times five. Yeah, let's do the correct order. It's I know you can think the answer that way, but let's do it in the correct order. And my last here then, what's gonna be my expression here? Six times five, because they're telling me my B is six. My expression is multiplying it by five. Okay, so that looked kind of scary, didn't it? No. No, it looked easy, good. I like it, okay? Those are gonna be some of the different uh, equations, some of the different situations that you guys are gonna be seeing on tonight's homework. Are there any questions on the ones that we did together so far? No. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys, of course, we have to do our math antics because well, he's just so much funnier than I am, okay? So, if you want to watch this video later on while you're doing your homework, maybe you kind of need a refresher, you forgot, this is on Schoology, so you can also watch it on Schoology. Lights, please. Voices are closed. Welcome to Math Antics. Today we're going to talk about an important math concept called order of operations. Order of operations is just a set of math rules that tell you which math operations, like addition or multiplication, to do first. Now you might be wondering, especially if you're a teenager, why do I need rules to tell me which operations to do first? Can't I just do them in any order I want? Well, that's a really good question. And to answer it, we're going to give two totally different people the same math problem to solve. The problem is 2 plus 5 times 4. Hmm, I like addition better than multiplication, so I'm going to do that first. Let's see, 2 plus 5 gives us 7, and then I just multiply that 7 by the 4, and I get 28. That was easy, but you'd better not copy my answer. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to copy your answer because I want the right answer. And I prefer multiplying, so I'm going to do that first. Let's see, 4 times 5 equals 20. And then I'll add the 2, which gives me 22 for a final answer. What makes you think that's the right answer? All my calculations were correct. I even checked it with a calculator. <sighs> the only calculator I need is right up here. And the correct answer is boop, 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 22. Okay, 
So which one of these guys do you think is right? Neither one made any mistakes with the calculations. They just did the operations in a different order and got different answers. Well, since there were no mistakes, in a way they were both right. But math would be a very confusing subject if there were different answers to the same problem. And that's where order of operations can help us out. The order of operations rules are a way for us all to agree on the order that you should do math operations in. And if we always do operations in the same order, then we'll always get the same answer. So now that you know why we need order of operations rules, let's find out what those rules are. There are basically four of them, and they go something like this. First, do operations in parentheses and brackets. Next, do exponents. Then, do multiplication and division. Last, do addition and subtraction. Let's take a closer look at each of these rules and see some examples where they help us. First on the list was do operations in parentheses and brackets. Now, in case you haven't seen parentheses or brackets used in math before, let me briefly explain how they work. Parentheses are just these symbols that curve forwards and backwards, and they're used in pairs like this. And when we put numbers and operators in between them, it forms a group. It's almost like the parentheses form a package to hold whatever math step we put inside them. And brackets work exactly the same way as parentheses. They just have a different shape that looks a little more boxy, but they mean exactly the same thing. So parentheses and brackets are used to group things together and our rules tell us to do any operations inside these groups first. For example, have a look at this problem. 10 times four plus five. It has three numbers and two operations, multiplication and addition. But two of the numbers and the addition symbol are inside parentheses. That means that they form a group and we need to do that part of the problem first. Four plus five equals nine. So the part inside the parentheses can just be replaced with the simplified value nine. Oh. And once you do the math that's inside the parentheses and get a single number like this, you usually don't need to show the parentheses anymore. Now that the parentheses are gone, we just have one operation left to do. We multiply 10 times nine, and that gives us 90 as our final answer. So parentheses can really help you know what part of a problem you're supposed to do first. But what if you get a problem that has more than one set of parentheses, like this? Five minus three plus six times two. Fortunately, it doesn't matter which set of parentheses you do first. You just need to do everything that's inside the parentheses before you do anything that's not inside parentheses. In other words, we need to simplify both of our parentheses groups before we can do the addition in between them. The first group, five minus three, simplifies to two. And the second group, six times two, simplifies to 12. Now we can do the last operation and add the values that we got from simplifying. 2 plus 12 equals 14. Okay, now that we know that we always do operations in parentheses or brackets first, let's take a closer look at the second rule that says the next thing we do is exponents. Now, if you haven't seen exponents before, they're just a way of writing repeated multiplication. For example, the repeated multiplication 4 times 4 can be written in a shorter form as 4 multiplied twice. And 4 times 4 times 4 can be written as 4 multiplied 3 times and four times four times four times four can be written as four multiplied four times. Get the idea? This small number is called an exponent, or power. It just tells you how many times to multiply the bigger number together. So after we take care of any parentheses, simplifying any exponents becomes the next highest priority. For example, in this problem, we have to simplify the exponent before we can do the other multiplication. The exponent is telling us to multiply five together twice. So five times five is 25. And after we do that, then we multiply the result by three. So 25 times three is 75. Oh, and one thing I should point out, sometimes you'll get a problem that has exponents inside of parentheses, like this problem. And you may wonder, how can I get rid of the parentheses before I do the exponents? You might think that if you simplify the exponent first, you're breaking the rules. But the truth is that by doing whatever operations are inside the parentheses, you are doing the parentheses first. The parentheses really just tell you where to start. So in this problem, first we do three to the power of two, which means three times three, which is nine. Then the part inside the parentheses is nine times four, which equals 36. And once the parentheses are gone, we add 36 plus six and get 42 as our final answer. All right, now we're gonna look at the last two rules together. 
These two rules are really important because they deal with the most common math operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And the rules tell us that we need to do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. To see how these rules work, let's look at a few quick examples that use those basic operations. First, let's try this one. 2 plus 5 times 4. Aha! Does this look familiar? Yep, it's the one we gave to my two friends earlier. And now that we have our rules, we see that we have to do the multiplication before the addition. 5 times 4 equals 20, and then we add the 2, which gives us 22. So the second guy was right. What a surprise! Now let's try this one. 3 times 5 minus 1. Our rules tell us that multiplication is higher on the list than subtraction, so we do 3 times 5 first. And that gives us 15, and then we subtract the 1, which leaves 14 as our final answer. Here's one with division and subtraction. 20 minus 10 divided by 5. And since division has a higher priority, we do the 10 divided by 5 first, which equals 2. And then we subtract 2 from 20 and get 18 as our final answer. And here's another problem. 12 divided by 6 plus 5. Again, our rules say to do the division before addition. So 12 divided by 6 equals 2. And then we add the 5 to get 7. And here's one last problem. 40 divided by 4 times 5. Which do we do first? Multiplication or division? Our rules don't tell us. Well, that's because multiplication and division are tied for priority or importance. So are addition and subtraction. And that's the reason we need an extra part at the end of each of these rules that says from left to right. If you have a problem that has both multiplication and division, then you're supposed to work it from left to right. That's because in some cases, you can get a different answer if you go from right to left. For example, in this problem, if you work from right to left the wrong way, you would do the 4 times 5 first and get 20, and then 40 divided by 20 equals 2. But if you go from left to right, you would do 40 divided by 4 first, which is 10, and then 10 times 5 equals 50. Wow, the direction we went made a big difference. So whenever you have a problem that has a mixture of multiplication and division, or a mixture of addition and subtraction, you know to do the operations in order from left to right. All right, we're just about done, but let's have one more look at all four of our rules before you start practicing with the exercises. The order of operations rules say, first, do operations in parentheses and brackets. Next, do exponents. Then, do multiplication and division from left to right. Last, do addition and subtraction from left to right. All right, that does it for this video. Good luck with the exercises, and I'll see you next time. Uh, my left, switch me. There you go, thanks. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to do something different. I feel like, like we need some fun time, some relax time, some chill time. So, normally I tell you now to go ahead and start doing your math homework. Malia, we go ahead and turn the other light too. Her turn for that. But instead of having you start your math homework right away, I'm going to do a Thanksgiving story. So, this is called How to Catch a Turkey. It says from the New York Times best selling team, Adam Wallace and Andy Elkerton. No turkeys were harmed in the making of this book. All right, here we are on Thanksgiving Day. It's that special time of year. Yes, I know, I'm a turkey. That much should be clear. So gather round, I have a tale, and it's really quite a story. What I tell you now is not a joke. It's my crowning glory. I just, I just like reading kids' books. Like that's, that's nice, right? But isn't it nice to be the next yeah. Okay. It all began one year ago. I was at a school, you see, Play preparations were underway, but that didn't matter to me. Some kids walked by in silly clothes, talked about the play. We'll even have a turkey on stage. It's perfect for Thanksgiving Day. Uh, 
turkey? Stage? No way, no how. Had I really heard that right? I broke out of my pen and ran away with a case of bad stage fright. I burst into the science room, knocked over flasks and beakers, and the cry of, catch that turkey, boomed over the loudspeakers. So now more children joined the chase with catapults and food, but their goopy mashed potatoes weren't enough to keep me glued. Up next, there was a maze of books that stretched from wall to wall, but with a big hop and a mighty flap, I managed to escape it all. It rhymes. Nice. We got some rhyming going on. I ducked past chairs and bags and desks. Now that was quite the trick. The kids thought they could stop me here, but I was too quick. I ran outside to the jungle gym thinking I could hide, but the recess yard was all tricked out. I'd have better luck inside. Finally, the kids gave up, but the principal gave chase. My only hope of escaping her was keeping up my pace. Can you imagine Mr. Ivanyo chasing a turkey? <laughs> I slid into Coach's room and crashed into a chair. I got tangled up in jerseys, but I won't get stuck in there. I ran into a curtain. There was nowhere else to go. I couldn't get past the principal, but the curtain led the show. My heart was racing. I started to sweat. I couldn't squawk or run. <sighs> Raise your hand if you would be nervous to go on stage for something. Oh, no. Yeah, most of you guys. I took a deep breath. I can do this. Who knows? This might be fun. A kid stood up and pointed. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. He really is, a parent agreed, in his little mascot suit. I started to smile and even dance while the crowd continued to cheer. I was filled with joy that I took the chance, and that's what started my mascot career. Oh, I thought it was going to be saying mascot dance. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, you guys have for your math homework, I know it math on solving expressions. Yeah. You guys have any questions? Nope. All right, go ahead and get started. Thank you.